Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Wednesday, August 19th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Hillary Clinton makes light of her email scandal by shrugging off suggestions that she wiped her server clean. Did you wipe the server? What, like with a cloth or something? No. Donald Trump says Hillary could get up to 20 years in prison for deleting the emails, and there's a federal law that she voted for that backs them up. Meanwhile, Jeb Bush says the NSA needs more power to fight the evildoers, and he urges the tech giants to cooperate. And the totalitarian regime has a plan for your future. And they want your total obedience. Even if it means bludgeoning every last citizen into enlightenment. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. You know, let's release everything. Let's let everybody in America see what I did for four years. Well, just as a heads up, you're going to be watching some very disturbing video coming up later in the show. Uh, they released the seventh undercover Planned Parenthood video. It is very gruesome, very disturbing, and if you can even believe it, it's more shocking than all of the other videos that have come before it. Um, Alex Jones asked this question earlier on the radio show today. If, if babies are not safe, if, if the unborn aren't safe, the most vulnerable among us are not okay in this country, are any of us safe? So that's going to be coming up later in the show. But first, let's talk about the candidate that receives 20 times more funding from Planned Parenthood than any other Democratic uh, candidate out there, probably any other candidate that's out there. Hillary Clinton, what will our country look like under another Clinton presidency? Did you try to wipe the entire, so that there'd be no email, no personal, no official, wipe well, the whole thing? Well, my personal emails are my personal business. You were the official in charge. Did you wipe the server? What, like with a cloth or something? I don't know. Well, you no. know how it works digitally. Did you try to I, wipe the whole server? I don't know how it works digitally at all. I do not so have you any. You did not try. You did not try. So just like she shrugs off the illegality of profiting from the sale of baby parts, she's also going to shrug off the fact that she illegally wiped her server. She's going to joke about, oh, what did, what did I use, a cloth? Now, Clinton told reporters that she's sure that she never received or sent material that was marked or designated classified through her private email account because she said, you know, it would have been marked as such. Well, an aide to a Republican member of the Senate Intelligence Committee fired back and they said, the way that you decide if something is classified when you're the Secretary of State isn't that you look for some stamp, you look at the contents. Clinton was one of just 20 high-ranking officials who President Obama named in a December 2009 uh, executive order as having the authority to order things classified or top secret. So she is the one that's given the authority to say, oh, I'm looking at something that's top secret. I better label it as such. And she's the Secretary of State. So, of course, she's going to be handling classified material. Um, now, after just going through 40 of the emails after the FBI seized her server last week, they just 40 of those emails, two of them were designated top secret. So, you know, they've got thousands more to go through. We'll have to see how that goes. Play that gif again, because, you know, at least Hillary is already in her orange jumpsuit. So, you know, ready for Hillary. <laughs> She's already got her little orange jumpsuit there. Now, Donald Trump is predicting that Hillary could get up to 20 years in prison for deleting more than 30,000 emails. Uh, she says they, those were just her yoga emails, her yoga routines. They had nothing to do with work, um, you know, right. And this is according to a federal law that she voted for. So it's actually backing him up. It's the Surveillance-Oxley Act. It was passed in 2002 with a yes vote from then-Senator Hillary Clinton. One of its provisions is known as the anti-shredding law, and it forbids destroying documents in contemplation of a federal investigation. And it's meant to apply to corporate bad actors, uh, prescribes a maximum 20-year prison sentence, and Clinton directed the deletion of more than 30,000 of her emails at a time when Congress was investigating her actions surrounding the Benghazi attacks. And, of course, after she's turned over her server to the FBI this latest time, it, it has appeared to be professionally wiped clean several times. 
So Hillary's flagrant violation of the law has been such a hit there on the Hill that the Republican National Committee is now selling a special Hillary Clinton branded <laughs> white cloth. They say, do you have a secret server you need to wipe clean? Well, having trouble clearing out those pesky top secret emails? Well, Hillary's got just the thing, the secret server wiper. <laughs> so there, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a pretty, pretty, uh, or, or some Halloween costumes. Hey, if you want to be the wiping cloth that Hillary Clinton used to wipe her server clean, there you go. She has officially memed herself, and now that gif is going to play on into oblivion. And uh, Hillary already there in her nice orange jumpsuit getting ready for prison. Now, Governor Jesse Ventura has some choice words for Mrs. Clinton. And, uh, you know, obviously not a huge fan there. Kind of parroting Trump, who says, you know, she's going to get some prison time for this. Um, but he also isn't really holding back when it comes to the Donald. He has voiced some support for some of Trump's ideas. Uh, but he did, you know, have some other choice words for this entertainer turned presidential candidate. If he gets or when he gets elected, if that happens, he's not the benevolent dictator. Not like you are when you're head of a corporation where what you say goes. He's got to understand that government is a case of checks and balances and people have to work together and compromises have to happen. Mm -hmm. You are not a dictator like you are in the corporate or business world. So Ventura noted that one of the reasons why he finds Trump appealing is because he can afford to fund his own campaign, meaning he's not going to be beholden to lobbyists and big business. Uh, but he wasn't too keen on Trump's advocation for this erection of a wall. He said, we stand for freedom, and yet we want to put up a wall that makes the United States look like a prison? Walls are a two-way street. Not only will they keep people out, but they will also keep you in. Bingo. And that's not to mention walls are going to do nothing to stop criminals from coming through to the United States via the tunnels, the underground tunnels that they have been building for years to sh ship in drugs and other criminals. So once again, you know, what is this fascination with Trump? It's just like years ago with Obama, empty promises, all filler, and, you know, this cult of personality that's surrounding him. So what's the big difference this time? Uh, you know, it was bad with Obama, but it's okay with Trump. I mean, it's a puppet presidency all over again. Well, unlike every other campaign I've ever seen, from president to dog catcher, Trump has avoided putting up any issues, any policy statements about anything. He's been running on the strength of his character and his opposition to open borders. Now, for the first time, we see a detailed policy statement, and of course, it's on immigration. So let's take a look at the economic, the legal, and the liberty aspects of the Trump immigration policy. Bloomberg Business asks, what would happen to the economy if Trump got his way? Bloomberg says, the supply of workers would shrink a lot they also say service occupations would feel the burn. Illegal immigrants, they say, make up 5% of the workforce, and we don't have workers to replace them. Well, that's not true at all. This year, Americans out of the workforce rose to 33%, the highest rate since 1978. We all know from personal experience that entry-level jobs are being taken by immigrants, especially the jobs that typically went to students who were seeing depression-level unemployment rates. As these charts show, since December of 2007, the entire recovery that we've had since then, 75% of jobs have gone to foreign-born workers, and we have seen declining wages in America. The Bloomberg article also says that Social Security Fund would take a hit. They cite a study that undocumented workers pay $13 billion in payroll taxes. Do you really think that most illegals are paying Social Security taxes? One of the major incentives for American businesses to hire illegal aliens in the first place is that they can save over 7.5% in payroll taxes versus paying for a citizen who is on Social Security. And if they are paying the taxes, then the person who replaces them, who is an American citizen, would be paying those same Social Security taxes. Bloomberg, Wall Street, and the Washington politicians only look at the economic cost to businesses. But what about the welfare and education costs that anyone who pays taxes are being saddled with? Our borders are being flooded with foreign students. How is that going to be paid? With property taxes. 
It's not just the additional students. The costs per student are higher if they need special tutors. In Philadelphia, 800 students speaking 40 different languages from 70 countries have just been registered. If any child in the world can come here illegally and you can be compelled to pay for it, how will you be able to afford those soaring property taxes? Will you be put out of your home or will you simply be impoverished? One excellent aspect of Trump's immigration paper is the H-1B visa abuse that he attacks. Reading from his statement, he says, increase the prevailing wage for H-1Bs. We graduate two times more Americans with STEM degrees each year than find STEM jobs. Yet as much as two-thirds of entry-level hiring for IT jobs is accomplished through the H-1B program. What are STEM jobs? Science, technology, engineering, manufacturing. The types of jobs that pay high wages that increase our standard of living. Let me repeat what he said. 50% of Americans with STEM degrees can't get jobs, yet 67% of entry-level IT jobs go to foreign workers with these H-1B visas. Let's turn to the legal aspects now. The anchor babies, that's been getting a lot of attention. The idea that foreigners could come to the U.S., have a baby, and then use that baby's citizenship to bring in an entire extended family, that is not something that you can find in the 14th Amendment. A lot of people have pushed back against the idea that we could ever stop the Anchor Baby program, but that's not in the text. The purpose of the 14th Amendment, remember, was to establish the rights of citizenship for freed slaves. Going back to the original passage of the 14th Amendment, in 1866, Senator Jacob Howard clearly spelled out the intent of the 14th Amendment. He said, every person born within the limits of the U.S. and subject to their jurisdiction is by virtue of natural law and national law a citizen of the United States. This will not, he writes, of course, include persons born in the United States who are foreigners, aliens, who belong to the families of ambassadors or foreign ministers accredited to the government of the United States. So it was never intended to make American citizens out of people who were born here of foreign parents who were visiting. That's what subject to the jurisdiction means. But even if you ignored that, why would you extend citizenship to the extended family? This is an abuse, and it needs to be stopped. Trump is right to call for its end. Let's turn now to liberty and law enforcement issues. I agree with Donald Trump that we should stop this ridiculous catch-and-release program of criminals who are illegal aliens. Being here illegally should not give you legal immunity. You should not be treated like you're some kind of a foreign diplomatic ambassador. Trump calls for building a wall and making Mexico pay for it. He also calls for increasing the number of immigration and customs enforcement officers by three times. He points out that since September 11th, we've already increased the number of ICE officers by a factor of three. So we're going to have 10 times the number of officers. We are creating a massive police state. We don't want to turn the American West into the West Bank of Israel with all of its oppressive population control measures. He also calls for nationwide E-Verify a new national ID card, an army of new law enforcement officers, and a gigantic wall around our country is not something that's going to stop immigration of people if you don't remove the subsidies and the incentives for them to come here. The flood of illegal immigrants is due to the incentives and the subsidies that we've created for the benefit of corporate profits and a socialist agenda. Stop those incentives and you can stop the flood of people. But creating a police state will do nothing to stop it if the incentives remain. For InfoWars, I'm David Knight. Thank you, David. And let's not overlook old Jeb Bush. Now, he's in second place to Donald Trump, and he is has nothing but contempt for civil liberty. Total authoritarian slash totalitarian here. His whole family's like that. He wants to expedite the security state above all. Uh, he said Tuesday that the NSA needs even more power and the government should have broad surveillance powers of Americans and private technology firms should cooperate better with intelligence agencies to help combat evildoers. Oh, I think his, his bro uh, coined that term. So he says, you know, rather bowing to the demands of their customers, you know, that shouldn't be the bottom line there, what your customers want, that Google and these other uh, agencies should just go ahead and fork over your information and just be more willing to violate your civil liberties in order to stop terrorists. 
Now, of course, this puts him at odds with Republican congressional leaders who earlier this year voted against bulk collection by the NSA. But that's not all. Jeb Bush says he is not going to rule out torture. And he's not the only 2016 candidate that's open to torture here. Uh, but he basically says, you know, I'm running for president, so I'm not going to say that I'm going to rule out torture or not. He said there's a difference between enhanced interrogation and torture. And, of course, that difference is whatever the White House deems uh, is legally justifiable. They don't want to point that out. But most of the candidates there... Uh, they basically just don't want to broadcast to the world um, whether they're going to be torturing people or not. So basically they're saying, just trust us. So that's what we're supposed to do, is just trust all of these people who have the future potential to torture, interrogate, and be absolute totalitarians. Now, millions of cheaters have had their information exposed as hackers made good on their threats but before you get too smug, what are, what are we saying about privacy, and especially privacy in the age of the Internet? Are we for it? Are we against it? Is it a good thing, bad thing? And then we're going to have a, a, an in-depth look at what Jesse Ventura has to say about running for president. And then that Planned Parenthood video is coming up, and like I said, it may be the most damning yet. Jesse, you've heard my point. The world's collapsing. Uh, in the third world, serious problems. I get the West has helped do that, but still the very same West that's helped do that is opening up to this, incentivizing it. Uh, I mean, uh, th th there's a headline out today where third world leaders say New York is more third world than their countries. Don't you see a problem with unlimited immigration? Yeah, well, here's my trade-off for you, Alex. Here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll state this, put walls at both of our borders, take down the Statue of Liberty and say, keep out, we're full. But the trade-off is we have to bring our entire U.S. military home and let them protect our borders. No more bases throughout the world and no more wars throughout the world, because over 100 years now, we've been fighting wars all over the world. And so if you'll bring the military home, I'll, I'll agree with you. We'll put up two walls. We'll let the military protect the United States of America, but we close all of our bases worldwide, and we use the military, like General Smedley Butler said, to protect the United States and only the United States. Fair trade? Jesse Ventura for president. That is an excellent idea. You know I'm a libertarian, and all these wars have been criminal. Uh, 15 years after supposed Al-Qaeda attacks, ISIS is worse than ever. I want to talk to you about that briefly. Uh, but absolutely, we, we have no business being an empire. And it sounds like you want us to be Switzerland, where it's very hard to get in. You've got to be skilled. you got to bring something to the table. Uh, and they've got one of the highest standard well, of livings. I, I don't necessarily want that, but that's my trade-off. If you're going to guard the country and we're going to put walls up, then let's do it the right way. Bring our military home. We don't need to be having military throughout the world. Our military should be to protect sure. the United States of America and us alone. I have another plan. How about we get rid of anchor baby status and welfare and corporate welfare and slash it all so there's an incentive for hardworking people to come? A lot of these immigrants are. Well, we could do all that by doing the, the military budget. If you bring them all home, the defense budget will get lopped in half. If the only thing we got to protect is the United States... We're going to have more money than we'll ever sure. know what to do with. Because sure. right now, we've lost over $1.7 trillion over there in the Middle East. Lost. Gone. $1.7 trillion. Absolutely. Lost. Listen, you're preaching to the choir lost here. but down the toilet. But it makes perfect sense. What I'm saying is you can't have all this welfare to incentivize lazy people whether it's from Europe or Latin America or wherever, to just come here and have their babies for free and be able to stay, that's not fair. Certainly it's not fair, just as corporate welfare is not fair either. I want to get rid of it. And so, we'll, no, and that's fine. We'll get rid of all that. You could get rid of all that. You wouldn't even have to get rid of it if you cut the defense budget in half. I want, I want to get rid of the welfare. Of I want to get rid of the welfare because it ruins people. Jesse, well, let me guess. I bet you've never been on welfare. Uh, I have not, but but my wife has. 
Well, welfare is supposed to be there for six months or something when you're in an emergency. Oh, no. My wife came from a broken family, a mother and four children, and they're embarrassed about it, but they were forced to uh, to take welfare at one point in their lives. Well, that's different. So I know what it's like, and I know that it's a safety net that's out there, and, uh, you know, we certainly can remove it. But then again, if we're going to remove that safety net, then we have to have stronger abortion policies. Because if you're going to bring all these unwanted kids into the world, you better have something for them. You know, the thing I love about the Repubs, they care more about people who aren't even here yet than they do the people who are. Well, look, I mean, I get the point that you can't have this welfare state and then it's basically aborting these people anyways. They're just dumbed down. Well, that's the point. If we're going to bring all these babies into the world and many of them are unwanted, many of them are poor, many of them are this and that, and then you abandon them and say, hey, you're on your own now. You got born, but you're on your own. No, but that's a government policy of putting women on welfare and saying a man can't be in the house to create giant broken systems to be Democratic voters that created that. Well, whatever it is, if you're gonna if you're gonna be tough on abortion, then you also have to be uh, have a decent safety. Look, look, look! I get people that that, that don't want to have another kid, and, and so I don't judge them. But the abortion system itself was run by Margaret Sanger. They're selling body parts. They're lying about it. That's my concern. Is the people running it are very evil? Well, you know, then maybe you better get in there and straighten it out. Well, I'm trying. Uh, Hillary, okay. do, do you, you think know, we... But the point is, like I said, I think it's very evil to take away the system, the, the safety net, and then force, uh, you know, like Scott Walker, he want, he doesn't even want, you can't get an abortion through incest or rape either. Can, well, can't so we at least ban is, partial if birth? A victim of incest or rape, according to Scott Walker, that that woman has to take that child and bear it. Yeah, well, I think arguments like that helps keep uh, it legal uh, because it's, it does sound extreme from the perspective of those that are for it. But what about partial birth? An eight-month-old baby could be uh, cesarean and live. Why sell its body parts? Well, I don't, I'm not an expert on that, Alex. I don't know nothing about that. I, I don't either. You're asking somebody that's never looked into it, and I'm not going to comment on no, it. No, I hear I, you. I, I, I don't know anything about that. I hear you. All I know is that it ain't the government's job to, 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 to in my opinion, to tell a woman what to do with her. Well, body. I think this is good radio. I didn't mean to get in arguments all day with you, but it's important to flesh this out. And, sure. and, and I understand and you I'm believe in your stance. I'm a believer that I don't want. You talk about independence. You want government in your sexual activities? I don't. Hey, you're for uh, decriminalization of prostitution. I agree with you, and now Amnesty International agrees. Studies show it lowers the crime rate and the abuse of women. Absolutely. I say take pimps and government pimps completely out of it. Well, the only reason it's illegal is because there's an exchange of money. And government it's wants its cut. Sexual acts between two consenting adults are all legal. The only thing that makes prostitution illegal is you have an exchange of money. That's the only thing about it that makes it illegal. Well, I appreciate the fact you're not a hypocrite because I don't know the details, but I would imagine being in the Navy, you're not a spring chicken when it comes to <laughs> a little bit of fun. <laughs> anyway, let's go to callers, Alex. You I, promised that I'd have callers. I want to do it, but you promised you'd talk about Hillary. I mean, I've been wanting to know, do you think we're about to see the fall of Hillary? Uh, I, I think there's a backlash against Hillary. I get a laugh, though, about her emails and all that stuff, how everyone's up in arms over her emails. I would much rather have an investigation of the trumped-up Iraq war. I agree. And how we were lied to and all the millions of people, hundreds of thousands who were killed because of it, and the mess we're in today. You notice nobody, or I would prefer them to investigate us torturing people. See, to me, those are investigations that should happen. Hillary's emails, I could give a damn less about them. Uh, yeah. Well, what about... What about the fact that we see Jeb Bush coming out endorsing torture last week? Did you see that? Yeah, I can't believe it. You know, to me, here you've got a presidential candidate that wants to be a war criminal. <laughs> I mean, that's what he's saying, because if you endorse torture, that is a war crime. His brother and Dick Cheney are war criminals. Well, I love how he blames the Democrats who've been accomplices after the fact 
like they know about the crime and have helped go along with it, but they didn't execute the crime. And then Jeb Bush last week blamed the Democrats for Iraq when it's Saudi Arabia and ISIS that's running havoc right now that the Bushes are completely allied with. Exactly. It's, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. And I hope the people of this country wake up and see the facts you've just talked about, Alex. It's, it's for Jeb Bush to say torturing's okay, we want a president who's a war criminal. And, and you know, but it doesn't surprise me because 90% of these elected bozos were never in the military. And the thing is, if we're going to torture, then we shouldn't complain if other countries torture us. Now, if you get Jeb Bush or Hillary, I might actually join you in Baja. <laughs> <laughs> That's who you're going to get, baby. Oh, man, I tell you. That's who you're going to get because on the Democratic side, even no matter what Bernie Sanders does, they've got these superdelegates, and superdelegates carry the field. So no matter – Hillary's going to get it because she's got the superdelegates no matter what Sanders does. And on the other side, they're going to get rid of Trump because they're going to say he can't beat Hillary. We've got to have someone who can. And so it probably will end up, I think, Jeb Bush and Hillary. I don't know who's worse of those two. Uh, maybe Hillary because she does that joker face. She's just, I detest her. And it's not because she's a woman like Bernie Sanders says. It's just I'm sick of her. I mean, I'm sick. Well, you know, maybe maybe Jeb Bush because then then we could cancel the Revolutionary War and we could say that we too have a king, King Bush. Authoritarians merely want obedience, while totalitarians, whose rule is rooted in an ideology, want obedience and conversion. The authoritarians are the guys in charge who want to stay in charge, and they don't much care about you or what you're doing so long as you stay out of their way. Live or die, it's all same to the regime. Totalitarians are a different breed. These are the people who have a plan, who think they see the future more clearly than you, or who are convinced they grasp reality in a way that you do not. They don't serve themselves, they serve history, or the people, or the idea, or some other ideological totem that justifies their actions. They want obedience, of course, but even more, they want their rule and their belief system to be accepted and self-sustaining. And the only way to achieve that is to create a new society of people who share those beliefs, even if it means bludgeoning every last citizen into enlightenment. That's what makes totalitarians different and more dangerous. They are totalistic in the sense they demand a complete reorientation of the individual to the state and its ideological ends. Every person who harbors a secret objection or even so much as a doubt is a danger to the future of the whole project. And so the regime compels its subjects not only to obey, but to believe. Well, hackers have made good on a threat to expose millions of users on a dating website that caters to uh, people engaged in extramarital affairs. Now, these users have been identified in a 9.7 gigabyte data file that was posted to the dark web. That means anybody with an encrypted computer can view this information. Uh, that was released today. It includes private data that includes names, addresses, phone numbers, credit card details, as well as sexual fantasies and profile photos. Now, interestingly, Washington, D.C. has the highest rate of membership, and at least 15,000 of those uh, email addresses are from government agencies that using a .gov and .mil email servers. Those include the White House, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, the House, and the Senate. Now, interestingly, this hack was motivated by ideological differences. The data was leaked after the Impact team, who's the group that first compromised the website, they threatened to reveal it unless Ashley Madison was shut down and all of Ashley Madison's partner sites. Their main gripe was the fact that users have to pay to have their information deleted and the fact that even after Ashley Madison charged for this service, they made millions off of it, that information was never truly deleted. And that's what the impact team was really trying to point out, is that, hey, you're paying all this money for this extra service, and look, your information is right here, and by the way, we're going to expose you because you shouldn't be cheating anyway.
Now, before you get smug and say, well, they deserved it because they were cheating, you know, what does this hack say about the future of the internet and especially, you know, our request for privacy on the internet? Uh, journalist Glenn Greenwald points out that this is, you know, really goes to show that it's not just terrorists who have something to hide. Um, but above all, this is about internet privacy. Now, under military rules, for instance, uh, philanderers can be punished by a year in confine uh, confinement and dishonorable discharge, which means they would lose their pension. So if anyone there is exposed, obviously that's bad news for them. Um, also, uh, people are saying that they need to use the information that was leaked to go after social justice warriors and people out there who are acting holier than thou. If they're on there, go ahead and expose them. And of course, this information can be used to blackmail people. Um, and they kind of point out that there's many instances where people could have signed up. Maybe they were a journalist and they went to sign up, or maybe they are in an open marriage. I mean, who knows? But now, all of their private information is going to be on the internet forever to come back and haunt them, um, you know, for forever, really. Now, journalist Chris Hayes took to Twitter. Uh, he similar, similarly suggests that if Ashley Madison could be hacked, so could many other things that we might not feel nearly as smug about, like medical records, tax returns, or even your inbox. So in other words, don't take internet privacy for granted because you never know when it's gonna come back to haunt you. So be sure to keep that in mind if you are a Yelp user. Now, of course, that website is very handy when it, you wanna make some feedback about a business and its practices, but now the site has partnered with the feds. They're gonna allow Yelpers to review any number of federal uh, agencies. Um, they got the TSA checkpoints, any of the offices you might have to deal with, national parks, social security administration offices, landmarks, and all the other places that are already listed on Yelp. They want, it, they want you to say whether you've had a good or bad feedback to share your experience. Now, now, uh, DigitalGov claims the Yelp effort constitutes new ways to use customer insights to improve citizen services, such as dangerous full body scans and invasive pat downs at airports. But you'll recall that in 2014, a Virginia Court of Appeals ruled that Yelp users have no right to anonymity when they post negative comments on the website. So obviously, this is nothing more than an effort to monitor government opposition. So be careful out there. Five years into the Syrian civil war, a media blackout is settling over the conflict as the United Nations, a supposed moderate rebel army, and a 2015 Bilderberg agenda priority carve a path to topple Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. After collapsing the Libyan economy, unseating and killing Gaddafi, and pilfering the Libyan stockpile of weapons to arm ISIS. The Obama White House's next task was to execute a duplicate illegal hit job on Assad's Syria. Assad has been fighting the New World Order cancer ever since. In 2014, Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative journalist Seymour Hersh explained the botched weapons of mass destruction's ploy to enter Syria. Obama's change of mind had its origins at Porton Down, the defense laboratory in Wiltshire. British intelligence had obtained a sample of the sarin used in the 21st August attack and analysis demonstrated that the gas used didn't match the batches known to exist in the Syrian army's chemical weapons arsenal. The message that the case against Syria wouldn't hold up was quickly relayed to the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff. The British report heightened doubts inside the Pentagon. The Joint Chiefs were already preparing to warn Obama that his plans for a far-reaching bomb and missile attack on Syria's infrastructure could lead to a wider war in the Middle East. As a consequence, the American officers delivered a last-minute caution to the President, which in their view eventually led to his canceling the attack. Recently, a UN Special Envoy, Staffan de Mistura, launched a disinfo war attack on Syrian President Assad's character. Mistura condemned the Syrian government's air raids in the rebel-held Syrian city of Douma. Mistura called it unacceptable under any circumstances. Meanwhile, the United Nations has already called for an inclusive transitional governing body with full executive powers to be formed with mutual consent 
while ensuring continuity of governmental institutions. It made no mention of President Bashar Assad. For the time being, the United States has dropped $41 million on equipping and training the new Syria force, an army made up of soldiers ebbing from the factions linked directly to ISIS. In 2012, your agency was saying, quote, the Salafists, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Al-Qaeda in Iraq are the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria. Mm -hmm. In 2012, the yeah. US was helping coordinate arms transfers to those same groups. You knew those groups were around, you saw this analysis, sure. and you were arguing against it, but who wasn't listening? I think the administration. I think it was a willful decision. You'd have to really ask the president, what is it that he actually is doing with the, with the uh, policy that is in place? Because it is very, very confusing. And it wasn't just Saudi Arabia, it was UAE and Qatar and, and all of the uh, other Sunni groups that are trying to uh, uh, break up that Shia crescent, as they describe it. Look, it's not, you know, Iran has its problems, but it's not the one that's supporting these jihadi groups going around uh, killing people, beheading them, setting up these sex slave systems, and supporting ISIS, which is now threatening the U.S. It's the Sunnis. I don't know how you're going to handle on this at this point, but it is out of control, and this administration is, is totally oblivious to it. As the Obama administration once again assumes the public is stupid enough to buy the proxy Syrian army's putative mission to fight ISIS, it remains conspicuously obvious that Turkish interests have already begun sealing Syria's economic fate. Gulf News Syria reports, recent visitors from Aleppo have confirmed that the opposition, local council of Aleppo City, encouraged several state institutions in Syria's north to use the Turkish lira instead of the Syrian pound as their chief means of exchange. Syrian President Assad's back is up against the wall as the malevolent claws of the New World Order mutilate his reputation and devour his nation's sovereignty. John Bound for Infowars.com. In today's world, abortion supporters routinely attend pro-life rallies and attempt to bully activists. If you have a problem and need a smelly group of commie devil worshipers, maybe you can call the A-Team. How many did I adopt? I kill my kids. I kill my kids. So what Hey, we saw your Facebook with your communist hammer and sickle. That's pretty cool, man. Is that you on the Facebook? <laughs> uh, is there a Facebook page of you with a hammer and sickle? I don't think so. I don't want to kill him. I love Satan. <laughs> How do you get your abortions paid for? I pay for them. I thought yeah, you said I mean, free. Uh, upwards of 50. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you piece of <laughs> Bunch of misogynist mother <laughs> Take your male privilege somewhere else. How about you being aggressive? I'm being aggressive. Come on, and us! Give us! Wow! Watch out! These, that's the guys that attack Alex Jones. Well, be warned, the video that you are about to see is definitely going to be disturbing to any of the viewers out there. I really don't know how you couldn't find this absolutely horrendous unless you have no heart, no soul. Now, this is, uh, once again, from the Center for Medical Progress. It's their seventh expose and the third video in their Human Capital web series, and it exhibits absolute barbarism on the part of Planned Parenthood. Now, like I said, Holly O'Donnell worked for STEM Express, and STEM Express is a company that partnered with Planned Parenthood in California to harvest and sell organs obtained via abortions to medical researchers. The company pioneered techniques that are used to maintain heartbeats from aborted babies to better preserve them. One of the main slogans on the About Us section of its website is the purity, viability, and quality you need. Now, according to a Center for Medical Medical Progress press release, they say STEM Express has been cited in published scientific literature as a source of fetal hearts used for Langerdorf perfusion, which keeps a heart beating after it is excised from the body. 
Now, of course, since all of these videos have come out, Stem Express has cut ties with Planned Parenthood, you know, saying that they don't want to get caught up in this controversy. Planned Parenthood, of course, is denying any wrongdoing. And, you know, thankfully, they are now the subject of investigation by Congress and more than half a dozen states. But like I said, what you're about to see, it's really horrendous. You need to watch this video, though, and decide for yourself, you know, Planned Parenthood, is it a criminal organization from the top down or is it not? Should it be immediately stripped of federal taxpayer dollars or should we just go ahead and keep on funding um, really the downfall of our humanity? Roll the tape. I was training with Jessica in the Alameda and I've been doing it for a few weeks so I kind of knew what I was doing but kind of not. And it was really busy and one of the doctors came in and she looked really frustrated. The medical assistants were with her, and I don't know, it was my deal to listen and see what's going on. And the doctor just says, if she can't calm down, I can't do the abortion, like, and I can't medicate her, something, something like that. And she was just distraught. Finally, the woman she calmed down, and the doctor went in to perform, perform the abortion. It takes a little while, and I'm in the hallway. I see the jar come out, goes into the the path lab. Yeah, Jessica, I can hear, is preparing it. Rinsing out the jar, rinsing out the linen, the wrapping that catches it, dumping it in the strainer, rinsing it off, putting water in the pie dish, and getting it ready for the doctor. So then I hear her call my name, hey, Ollie, come over here. I want you to see something kind of cool. It's kind of neat. So I'm over here, and this is the moment I see it, I'm just flabbergasted. This is the most gestated fetus and closest thing to a baby I've seen and she's like okay I want to show you something so she has one of her instruments and she just taps the heart and it starts beating and I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this fetus and its heart is beating and I don't know what to think and she's like you know why that's happening and I knew why it was happening it's because the electrical current was the nodes were still firing and I don't know if that constitutes it's technically dead or it's alive it had a face it wasn't completely torn up and its nose was very pronounced it's it had eyelids and its mouth was pronounced and then since the fetus was so, so intact she said okay well this is a really good fetus and it looks like we can procure a lot from it um, we're gonna procure a brain. So, I just, the moment I hear something, like, that means we're gonna have to cut the head open. We're gonna have to cut the head open. So, it's like, okay, so what you do is you go through the face. I'm thinking, no, I don't wanna do this. And she takes the scissors and she makes a small incision right here and goes, I would say, to maybe a little bit through the mouth. And she's like, okay, can you go the rest of the way? And I'm like, yes. And I remember picking it up and finishing going through the rest of the face. And Jessica picking up the brain and putting it in the container with the media and parafilming it. And she left and she's like, okay, you can clean it up. And I'm just, I'm just sitting there like, what did I just do? And that was the moment I knew I couldn't work for the company anymore. I remember holding that fetus in my hands when everybody else was busy and started crying and opened the lid and put it back in. It's just really hard knowing that you're the only person who's ever gonna hold it, that baby. Well, that's it for the show tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and help take us to the next level. And be sure to share the show with your friends. You can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv where you'll get instant access to over 18 years worth of content. And it's all gonna be in high def, much better quality than what you're gonna find on YouTube. Uh, we got all of our movies there, all the documentaries, um, as well as our eBooks things that you cannot find in the store. So thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We will see you here again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central.